So far, we talked about multiple methods to make the numerical stability. Now let's look at some results to verify these methods. We first import HAMSNET and other libraries to plot uh, figures. The first experiments we're going to do here, we're going to generate a bunch of random matrices and do the multiplication. So here we define a function called plot random matrices but with two arguments. The first one is called scale, which is controls the variance of the random matrices, and then k is the shape. So now we first generate y, which is which is the input, uh, is a diagonal, is identity matrix, uh, matrix. Then we do 100 multiplications every time we generate a random matrix using uh, normal distribution, and the shape is k by k and the variance is by scale. And we do multiplication between w and y and save the result to y. We return y, then this is 100 multi, uh, random matrix multiplication. Now let's try some, see some results. First, we using a scale equal to 0 0.5 and it's a 4 by 4 matrix. Then we choose a scale equal to 0 0.7. You can see that even that scale is pretty close to each other, the first result is pretty all have small values. It's all equals to 1e minus 6. But the second matrix, um, and, two, and then have very large numbers. It's close to 1e plus 10. Which shows if we do a bunch of matrix matrix multiplication, then it's pretty, it's the values, the output is very sensitive to the variance. So we need to choose them carefully. Then we define a function to compute the synthetic gradients of MLP. So the input is k, again, this is the shape, and sigma is activation function. d sigma is sigma prime, this is a gradient function of the activation function. Then get weight, which means how to initialize, how to get the initialized weight matrix. This is a function handle. Because this is pretty random, we, we're going to repeat by 10 times and compute the, uh, compute the average. In each repeat, we first generate random x, which have the shape, it's, it's a k by 1 vector. And h, this output is currently is all 1, and the y, again, that's the re results, is identity matrix. Assume that this MLP have 50 layers. For each layer, we first get the we first get the initialized weight by calling the uh, input function handle. Then we do mod, we do W times H to get input of the activation function. Then we fit into the the gradient function of sigma, and the times again with W T by chain rule. And again, by the input, by the by the y, so we can compute the gradients of this output, uh, this layer's output. Then we up update w, uh, we update h, which is uh, the fourth function to fit into the next layer. So we repeat by fifty times, and at the end, for the output, this is the y, this is the gradients we compute the absolute min and to report the results. Finally, by we average the results by over those 10 uh, uh, repeats. Now let's fit with uh, definitions. We first choose the layers, the size is 100, which means the output size is 100. Then the activation function we use is ReLU. We just are using the ReLU from the ND namespace to get the gradient functions. Just lambda function returns x if x larger than zero, it returns one. Otherwise, it's zero. 
the weight initialization we are using is, is configurable. It's actually using a normal distribution with zero min, and by given the variance, we're gonna, we have configured letter, and the shape is actually the shape is k by k. Next, we try different scales, which is different variance, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. And we can print the variance and the gradient means by calling the synthetic gradient function we de defined before. And we can see the results. You can see that using a little bit small scale, the gradient mean is pretty small. It's 1e minus 9. And for 0 0.2, it's reasonable it's like it's it's a reasonable value but if we double the scale again it's pretty large uh gradients it's one to e minus 20 and if we choose another again then we get a lot of number okay so in this case only 0 0.2 is a reasonable value we can consider if you cannot too large you can we cannot be too small we cannot to be too large So if, if we change to xvir, uh, we can, so xvir lets you to define the scale equals to um, using, here we using uniform uh, distribution, we can get the scale equals to six over the input is k, the output size is both k, it's is a simple case, both input and output have the same shape, and then um, compute square root. Then xvir just, uh, uh, it computed given the scale, which is the, uh, the lower threshold and the highest threshold of the uniform distribution, and we can compute again here. It's kind of it's not perfect. It's one e minus nine, but given this pretty small um, applications in practice, sometimes it's better. But again, it's at the least it gives you a, in a reasonable range. Now let's consider sigmoid. We know that sigmoid cause you, you um, gradient vanishing. We first define the sigmoid function is from the NDNA space, it's sigmoid. And the gradient of sigmoid function, we know that is one minus the value of sigmoid times the value of sigmoid. Similarly, we choose scale from 0 0.1 to 0 0.8 and compute average of the gradients. Now you can see that it's different to the ReLU that no matter how we choose is from 0 0.1 to 0 0.8, all these values are pretty small. It's, it's 1 e minus 33, and even very large scale, we still get um, 5 e minus 5, uh, e minus 5. So before using ReLU, it's easier to get a gradient exploding. Using sigmoid, it's actually uh, getting gradient vanishing here. We mentioned that we can fix the sigmoid by scale it. So here we define us so we define the activation function which is four times sigmoid minus two. Then the gradient function of sigma again is with just a, has a scale. Now do that again. We can see that well using scale e zero point one, the gradient mean is actually very reasonable. This is very good value. This is zero point zero one. And double again is not going to too big, and 0 0.4, 0 0.8, all reasonable value. Even 0 0.8 is a little bit larger, but it looks fine for the first few iterations. So, which shows that if we fix, if we rescale sigmoid, we can actually make the gradients much much more stabilized.